All right, space nerds. Um, I got something to uh, show you. Something to show you guys. Um, I'll start with the boring stuff first, um, and work my way towards the more interesting things. The first thing I wanted to show you was uh, on the star bases. You could always buy and sell cargo. You know, buy some cargo, go try to sell it somewhere, and make some money just on the price difference. That's kind of hard. So I added a thing where now you can. Um, there's transport contracts, so you can um, just make a fee for delivering cargo, and you don't have to buy the cargo or sell the cargo. You just get a fee for delivering it. Um, there's a deadline on these, like so many minutes to do it, and I haven't. I need to tune those numbers. I don't know if they're reasonable. Um, and also, currently, nothing happens right now if you uh, miss the deadline. And also nothing happens if you just uh, take a support contract, get the cargo, and then go sell the cargo, uh, which something should definitely happen if you do that. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. The second thing I wanted to show you was um, we have this f new font you might have noticed. Uh, it's probably a little hard to see on the video. Um, so this was sent to me by Byron Rusa. Uh, so it was a nice little patch, and you can see that it's a uh, kind of like a fixed width font, um, and the lowercase, like here's uppercase A, lowercase, it has kind of small caps for lowercase, which makes it a little more legible with this strange font system that I have. Um, you can see the old font if I go over here and say set current type face equals zero. That's the old font. Um, so it's a variable width font, which looks kind of weird. Um, anyway, there's a new font. Okay, the third thing that I want to show you guys um, is I've been experimenting with porting that be advised you've entered control from space. using GTK to SDL2 instead. There's a number of reasons why I might want to do this. Um, so about five years ago, I'm going to tell the story how I remember it. Uh, my friend Jeremy uh, began working on a patch to convert to SDL2 and the reason he was doing it at the time was he was going to try to run this thing on a Raspberry Pi 3, I think. Um, but the Raspberry Pi 3 was too slow, or whatever the Raspberry Pi was five years ago. It's too slow. It's still too slow today, really. Um, but since it was too slow, he, well, there was other mitigating factors. Um, I was at the same time working on a big giant patch um, having to do with aspect ratios. And I put in my patch, and that kind of clobbered his patch. I didn't even know he was working on that patch at the time. Um, so that, combined with the fact that the Raspberry Pi was too slow, he just kind of dropped it, and that was that. So now, five years later, um, I'm thinking about moving to SDL2 for other reasons. Um, and I remembered that he had this patch, so I asked him if he still had it, and he dug around an old laptop and found it and sent it to me, and... I've updated it, and that's what you see running right here. This is running with STL2, no GTK. Um, and, you know, there are a number of potential benefits, like if we wanted to port the game to Windows, uh, if it's STL2, that's going to be a lot easier than if it's GTK. Um, and let's see, if we wanted to try to do a web assembly, which I'm a little skeptical that that will ever really happen but um, if we did if it's SDL2 that's also easier than GTK there's a number of reasons you know things massively multi-threaded so and need, need lots of memory I, I kind of am doubting the WebAssembly thing will ever happen um, but anyway I, I started porting to SDL2 so a third reason and uh, I didn't really want to commit to SDL2 until I had some actual tangible benefit from it rather than just a potential benefit because a potential benefit doesn't really do anything. Um, and so 
one of the things that I couldn't figure out how to do with GTK was to have um, multiple windows, uh, multiple OpenGL windows, um, and I can do that with SDL. Um, I haven't figured everything out. It's sort of it's got a few little problems, but um, you can see I only have one client running, but I have two windows and I can switch these windows independently. Um, Wombat, be advised you're leaving um, control space. I can change the other one by using these buttons. Um, let's see what else. And so why, why would you want to do this? Um, so one of the things I was thinking about lately is uh, with this coronavirus thing out there, um, this game played in it the way that it was originally meant to be played is kind of a bad idea. Let's get a bunch of people together in a room with a bunch of computers and every Yeah, it's not a good idea. So that leaves, okay, well, maybe people can play it on the internet. But if they play it on the internet, then everybody has to have their own instance of the main screen running. And you could do this with multiple clients, but if you could do it with a single client, then you use half the bandwidth that you would if you used two clients. Um, so that's a good thing. So that's the main reason that you might want to do this. There are other ideas like I think Empty Epsilon uses a proxy server and I might still write a proxy server. I don't know. But this seemed like it might be easier. Um, now there are some problems like... Uh, well, there you go. See, if I resize this window, the other window is doing some strange things that it shouldn't. And I, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, uh, it seems like it. Uh, I mean, it should have per window all this information that's about the scaling should be in there per window. So I don't, I don't know, some bug. Um, and maybe I'll figure it out and, and maybe I won't. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, as a sort of proof of concept, supposing that I can get around that bug, I should have um, sort of multiple screens per client possible. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and if somebody is interested in porting this thing to Windows and it's SDL2 is going to make that a lot easier. Um, I mean, there's still a matter of uh, Windows sockets aren't exactly like Berkeley sockets, but I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think there's that much difference. And there's not, the network code is fairly well consolidated. Um, I don't know, there's probably a bunch of other stuff in there that makes it hard on Windows, but I think GTK may have been the biggest one, unless pthreads is a big giant problem on Windows. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's about all I had. Thanks for watching.